Here we have an LRM519 LG uh, DVR. If this were plugged in right now, the words hello would appear in green or blue. And that's it. It would not boot. There'd be nothing on screen. And for all intents and purposes, it would be dead. The first step is to identify the six screws that hold together the, uh, the chassis cover. And there's two on each side, two on the back, for a total of six. Now that all the screws are removed, you want to grab the two sides of the case and pull toward the back so that that little lip is exposed and now you just lift the case up. And the area that we're most interested in is the power supply over here. The first step in being able to remove the power supply board in order to get to the bottom of the circuits is to remove the disk drive. And so we're going to do that by removing one two, three, four screws. There are tabs that hold the front face of the unit in place. You can see one here. Across the top there's one here, here, and on the other side. There's three tabs that appear across the bottom as well. One, two, three. And all of these tabs in coordination need to be released so that the front face can come off the unit. You'll need to detach the connection for CN6 in order to remove the front face. That's done by gently sliding these tabs on either side out of the way and then pulling up. At this point you can see that the front face of the unit is completely removed from the chassis other than some of the cables. And the DVD unit is actually still in the chassis and I moved it forward as far as I possibly could. Enough that we should be able to get to the power supply board now just by moving the DVD player out of the way. See how the top of this capacitor is not flat? Mm -hmm. That's a sign that that capacitor either has or is about to fail. Same with this one right here. Both of these are green. This one is labeled C18. And this one, if you look on the board, is labeled C26. Sorry, three, C36. And so the real goal is to check where these are located on the bottom. Here we see the uh, C36. 
and up here we see C18 labeled right here. So now we need to get the soldering iron and undo those connections. So this package is from opamp-electronics.com and in here we should see the new capacitors I bought more than I needed because they didn't cost very much and as the printout suggests these are 2200 microfarad 10 volt plus or minus 20 percent radial electrolytic capacitor and the important thing with radial is that both leads um, come from the bottom of the capacitor an axial capacitor would have both would have one lead on either end And now we put the whole thing back together again.